<laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you love the accent. Brilliant. Oh, that's a good way to start this one, isn't it, Joe? This is going to be fun. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Hello, Joe. Welcome to the very weird and quirky start to this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Joe. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Looking forward to hearing your story. And uh, we said just prior to me recording that you're going to share, you know, obviously where you started, what you've done and where you're at. So welcome and I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's um, it's a privilege to get this opportunity. Um, I'm really excited to share my story. I'm really excited to share with the people um, all the things I've done to get to the state I'm at today. But um, I suppose it's best to kind of go from right from the very start. So for me, it started a couple of weeks. Probably, as a matter of fact, this time last year, it started for me when my ex said it was too much for a relationship and automatically I just felt instant rejection and um, didn't feel good about myself felt unloved felt unworthy felt like what could I have possibly done wrong here I thought I'd done everything right what could I have done wrong that's where the inside conversation started of what am I doing wrong I'm, mm. I'm unloved I've been rejected I'm not wanted this is how it's going to be um Christmas Eve last year, I uh, took a, I thought it was a suspected heart attack. I was in hospital. Um, it was actually um, a panic attack, which triggered chest pains, and I believed it to be a heart attack. So I was in hospital mm. Christmas Eve. So that, I suppose, was the, the big scale of where, uh, I would say, poor you know self-love and depression kicked in. That was probably the lowest it got to. Um, I felt really bad about myself, was trying to do so many things, thinking I need, I need to get better, I need to get better, but also thinking what's the point of getting better because I'm rejected. Mm. A lot of voices going on in your head. Um, that probably went on until February when I thought enough's enough. I need to do something about this. So I uh, went online, I found a counsellor who was local to where I stay um, to go to counselling to do um, cognitive behavioural therapy or CBT. Mm -hmm. um, I had 10 sessions there from February through to April and it was not easy it was not an easy journey um, I've had several breakdowns during the counselling sessions after the counselling sessions several mm -hmm. um, really low points thinking if I'm if I wasn't here who would care so I'd, I'd literally no care about myself and automatically that just went across the board and as we say if everyone you pushed out it felt that way in my life um, and then there came a point it was my mum's birthday and I'd been doing a lot of meditation at this point I'd been doing several meditations trying to do self love but nothing was really going in so that's how long it took for me to actually start believing in myself and then it got to my mum's birthday and the day the, on the night of the party I was in, a, in my suit and I looked at myself in the mirror and I thought wow you look really good you look amazing. You look fantastic. You look healthy. You look, mm. you just look great. And I was like, wow, this is the turning point. From then on, it's been meditation after meditation. The The path probably started as a way to get a specific person back. And then it just developed into a path of getting me back. So I had to come to, to terms with everything that had gone on in my life. Counseling made me go in deeper than just the breakup and back to childhood. And I think that's really important that you learn to accept that and you don't play the victim to that. I think when you play the victim to that is when it causes depression. Mm. So I think when you learn to accept that and you accept that it's that it's past, that it actually makes you as a person, and then you can actually, I think it's easier to help you move on from that. Well, in my experience, I've found it's been easier to move on from that. So since April through to present day I've been in such a good place um, that's not to say that you don't get the odd spell of feeling unloved it still happens it's just yep. it, when you've been so long in that state and it's been I think during my relationship I was quite low but um, I was using the external to try and make myself feel good and I was always using that to feel good and then once that wasn't there it was like I was you know I felt suffocated 
I felt like I had no air. I felt like, as you often put it, the oxygen tank. Mm. I felt like that was the oxygen tank. And then I thought, no, I've, I, I've got to change this. I have to change this. And it was a, it's been a really long, really um, grueling journey. But it's been one that's bared so much fruit because I've completely transformed as a person in the last year. And it's been all for the better. Um, I'm able to wake up and go to sleep with a smile on my face and for no apparent reason. I'm just, I'm happy all the time now. And I'm constantly, when I feel myself drifting into that state of loneliness or feeling like I'm not worth anything, it's a case of acknowledging it. I'm much more aware that I can acknowledge it, realise that it's not me. And then I just become happy again. I just, I, I work so hard at being aware of when these thoughts are coming in. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think people... I've found that, especially with watching your channel, because I came across your channel, I think it was in April as well, and I'd done the same thing about looking for the specific person and doing all that stuff, and then realising that this is that's not how you do it. It's got to start internally. You've got to fix yourself, um, which I've done, or I'm doing. But I think people, they get too... I think they want to be perfect. I think they want to get the self-love and they want to get everything perfect. Mm. And I think... People try almost too hard to get that way. I'm not saying it's it's, a, it's an easy journey because it's not, but mm. people almost want to try too hard and almost trying too hard is a display of not having what you want as well. Yep. Um, so I think people try far too hard to get what they want without realizing that it's you don't have to try. You, actually, you, you can work at it, but it's all work that happens internally. There's nothing else you can do on the outside. You have to mm-hmm. accept the external evidence of what is and go inward to realize what's going on within you and actually resolve that or come to terms with that and then yep. make the steps to resolve it. And I think that's what I've done personally. Mm. So, yeah. Um, so that's pretty much... that. Would, as I said, that was in April. I started feeling better. It's now December and um, the routine's just consistent, consistent self-love, looking after myself. I've actually started playing for a football team as well, so I've started doing different things that I wouldn't even thought of doing maybe nine months ago because mm-hmm. it was really, really dark times. Yeah. I've got to a point of actually feeling better about myself and people are noticing it. People in work are noticing it. People in my family are noticing it. People just, everyone I come across... Um, I'm just saying, well, you've got such a good energy about you now. It's just, and it's not as if anything physically, on the physical plane's changed. It's just I've changed completely and everything is conformed to my change. So mm-hmm. that in its own way is how my consciousness is creating my reality. Um, and it's it's not subtle changes here and there. It's not um, changes that are glaringly obvious, but it's just subtle little changes here and there that are actually, it's shown that, that what I'm doing is actually worthwhile. You don't need anything outside you to be complete. I, I find yeah. I think the minute you look for that, um, you're going to be looking for the rest of your life. You can have things that make you happy. You can have circumstances that make you happy, but you've got to be happy inside to get yeah. to that point. I would say. Yeah, I agree. And you got to create calm and peace within to attract that calm and peace on the outside with other people and a specific person is one of those people and in the meantime whether they've come back or not if you continue to work on that calm and peace because when you have a specific person that you've been really needy on you're not you're not at peace and you're not calm on the inside at all yeah because you're trying to get love all the time. You're so fixated on, I just have to get them to give more and then I'll feel better. And you don't even know that that's what's driving you. You just think they're not giving me enough. They're not giving me enough. They're not giving me enough. And you, you've got your ladder up the wrong wall. It's you that's needy and it's you that's trying to take too much. It's you that's trying to take too much. It's you that's trying to take too much. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, but we don't completely. see it. We don't see it when we're in it. We, we're sure it's about them. And that's the whole illusion that and that yeah. facade has crumbles down when they leave us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, you, you put so much emphasis on the outside. I mean, I spoke about it before the call. We, sp- we put so much on what's out there. We put so much pressure on what's out there. And we almost, I think we almost take it as a way to take the pressure off ourselves. 
I think yeah. we put so much out there. We take, we try, we think that that's going to alleviate the pressure from us. When in actual fact, it puts more on us because you you raise expectations of certain people. Yeah. You 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 almost put people on a pedestal and you put them way above your own needs and you yep. think that if if I raise them to a certain level to a certain standard, that they're going to be what I want them to be or what I expect them to be. When in actual mm. fact, no, it's it's the complete reverse. You put yourself in that, you hold yourself in that esteem and then you hold yourself with that regard mm. and you can think about people the way you want to think about people but you know that you care about yourself and everything will conform to that because mm. as we said, it's, we say it all the time, everyone's you pushed out. Yeah. So if you're feeling bad, um, you're going to attract bad circumstances. If you're feeling needy, you're always going to be found wanting in your life. You're never going to be satisfied with anything unless... It's on the external. And I think, also I think people, they try and think about it too much and they think, well, if I'm not, you know, in a good place, I don't, people don't understand the everyone as you pushed out, I don't think. I think mm. people always want to say, no, but, but they're being this, but they're doing that, but they're doing that. Yeah. Like, oh, but, so what's going on in you that's making that happen? Yeah. You're, you're probably having a conversation with them in your mind. Yeah. Which is causing that. And then mm. you don't people don't see the correlation that they I mean, I'm massive on Neville yeah. Neville's works. I love reading, listening, anything I can get in Neville's. Yeah. Anything I can get my hands on in Neville's mm. is just unbelievable. Yeah. But it's it's so true in the sense that you have these conversations and ninety five percent of the the world are actually carrying it out unconsciously. Yeah. They're, they're living so unconsciously in the sense that they're having all these conversations with people in their head. And then when that actually happens with that person, they don't see the link. They don't see that they've actually spoke to the same person maybe a week, um, a fortnight, a month ago. They've had the same conversation in their mind. They've played it over and over in their yeah. mind and it's happened. They don't, they don't see the link. And it's not until you read Neville's works and you especially the Mental Diets lecture. Um, yeah. It's not until that. And then you go, well, that's actually so true. And then you think about mm -hmm. it and go, yeah, I've I've seen that happening because I spoke about it in my mind for yep. God only knows how long. Yep, thinking and, I, thinking I was getting away with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thinking I was getting away with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's something I I suppose one of the best in, in terms of manifesting. I think one of the best things I've manifested. I've, I've manifested a few things. It's always been small things, but it, it's enough to give you the belief that it's that it's true. Because I think people. They try and and I know I was one of them. You try and manifest, you try and manifest the big thing for starters. You always yeah. try and go for the big one, which I'm not saying it's not the right way to do it, but I think it's important to give yourself belief that it works. Mm. So you manifest little things, and actually, the first thing I manifested was completely uh, un unknowingly to me. Um, it was during one of my counselling sessions, and. Uh, the council had asked me if I'd ever done uh, visualization, any visualization techniques. I says, no. I says, I want to learn how to do it because I know how powerful it is, but I've never done it. She said, okay, well, we'll, we'll do a, I'll guide you through a visualization. So she guided me and she said, I want you to visualize a safe place, somewhere that you'd never been, somewhere, somewhere you know of. It can be real, it can be fairy tale, but somewhere, just visualize a place and try and use all your senses. So I get into this this state, the state Neville talks about, the state bordering on sleep. And I was really, I took myself, almost took myself out that room. I was physically there, but I, I was I was gone. <laughs> I had to actually sit for five minutes and get myself <laughs> back that I was that far away. Yeah. So I visualized this place. Um, and then on this, this was on the Wednesday. And on the Saturday, I woke up and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go a drive. I'm going to go to Loch Lomond which I'd never been before. I've, I've, I'm Scottish, I'd never been to Loch Lomond. It's a shocker. <laughs> but um, I'd never been. And I was like, well, I'm going to go. I put it in at the sat nav, drove up. And when I got to the waterfront at Loch Lomond, the place I'd visualised on the Wednesday was there on the Saturday. It was. Wow. I'd, I'd never been to Loch Lomond in my life. And everything i seen, everything i felt and heard in the visualisation was right there, full <laughs> day later. And it was like unbelievable, and that was the point. I thought, yeah, there's there's some there's got to be something to this, and I think yeah. it was about them is when I found your channel as well, and I found other things. And I'm like, this isn't, mm -hmm. this is this is normal now. This is 
it's not that it's this has happened by chance because what possessed me on the Saturday to get up and say I'm going to go a drive and I'm going to go here it just happened it was like there was no planning I literally mm. booked a hotel mm. nearby and I just thought I'm going and I just yeah. drove, went there and it was like and I got there and I was standing there for about half an hour going I've seen this before yeah. And then it dawned on me, it was in my, I'd visualised it four days previous, but there was that much feeling behind how safe and how safe it was that it took me to the place. It physically took me to the place. Like an impulse. Uh, an impulse it was. It was yeah. yeah, it was. It was like, yeah, I'm going to just do this. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to disappear. No, no one's coming with me. I'm just going myself. And my family were all like, are you okay? Because they obviously knew I was going through depression at this point. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I said, I'm absolutely fine. I just I need to do this because there's something telling me I'm, I'm going to Loch Lomond today. And I went, got there, and the peace, the calm, everything I'd felt in the visualization, I felt oh. again on Saturday. And it was like, yeah, there's there's something to this. There's got to be something to this. Mm. At which point was when I started studying um, Law of Attraction, Nevo, all yeah. the different resources. And then it just felt so real. And I felt like, yeah, there's, this is this is absolutely possible that was probably the biggest thing i've manifested to date yeah. um but it's all about it's so important to feel it i mean people can you can imagine and you can imagine and, and keep doing it but if you don't feel anything with it then mm. it's just it's just daydreaming it's yeah. just daydreaming um you need to have the feeling behind it and feel mm. feel it to be real before mm. you can actually appreciate it and before you can i think you can have any chance of manifesting it but again manifesting it it's just it's not that you need that on the outside. It would be nice to have it. You know you want it. You know it's yours. But I don't think, I think it's important that, I think you don't do it from neediness. You've said it yourself. You don't want to be in a place of needing that thing. Mm. And that, that's when it comes, is when you don't need it. Yeah. And that's when it all appears. That's, that's true. It's, it's, it's so powerful. It's, it's amazing. It's totally changed my life. Um, Neville's teachings as well just totally changes my life. People maybe read these stuff or listen to it and they believe it to be fairy tale. But mm. it's absolutely not. It's there's so much power behind it. It's such Yeah. It's been life changing for me. And I believe yeah. obviously we've watched a lot of your videos, it's been the same for you also. Yeah. I think if you can if you can grasp everything he's saying and you can mm. take that in, then it can be such a big thing. It can really yeah. change your life. And I've yeah. found that especially. Huge. Yeah, I, I mean, he changed my life 30 years ago when I read his first book. The first, the first book I got was The Law and the Promise and it was all those stories about people that had manifested certain things and I couldn't sleep, Joe. I was like reading it all <laughs> night. Like my whole body was going, Zzz. Yeah, I could not come down and I was dying from a broken heart at the time. So this was like my oxygen, my new oxygen tank was this. Yeah. It was amazing. In a way, it's been very similar for me. Um, in its own way because I know that that feeling I think when you're at your lowest point of that when you as you say dying from a broken heart I think when, you, when you're at your lowest point of that mm. you really get to such a low almost an apathetic energy where you think there is absolutely no point you really it's such a low state of depression that you almost yep. don't see the way out you don't see yeah. anything you don't you, you just yeah. you can't see anything positive in your life at all you can't and it's it's so difficult it is so difficult but yeah. um and we said it before I, I want to stress that i mean you can have resources like i've had with nevo and counseling and whatever what i will say is you don't i wouldn't put the answer on people out there no one's going to give me the answer no one is directly going to show you the way it's yeah. all internal work, and some people might not want to hear that. Some people think it may think that it's that it should be easier than that, but it's all internal work. But what I will say is, when you get to that point and you know that you've put the work in, it's the same way anything. If you know you've put the work into something, mm. and you get results, then that's when it it just becomes so worthwhile. You put the internal work in, and the result comes on the outside. And your life just completely transforms. Yeah. And but it's all the internal work. I think a lot of people will maybe refrain from going to counselling, and they don't want to try and seek answers because they think, oh, what's the point? Um, they want someone, they want someone to hold their hand and take them down the path. When you've got to just walk. Yeah, you might fall, 
yeah, you might fall and you might trip up, you might hurt yourself, but you've just got to keep going down the path. You need you need to do it yourself. You need That's to put true. all the work in yourself. Yeah. And I realised as well, I realised that in my first email to you actually, that mm. um, it was very, it was a, it was such a wake up call for me as well because I, I realized in that answer and even when I was writing the questions to you that I was so focused on the outside and so focused on the person. It was like, yeah. wow, it's so true. Um, everything you said was just mm. perfect. It was so, it was refreshing to hear because at that point, again, I realized, yeah, this has got to change and I've got to yeah. change me. Yeah. I have to change me. And um, I'm so proud to be able to sit here tonight and say that I've done that mm. because without my work nothing would have changed in my life um, I'm doing well in my job I'm doing well in life in general and I'm just enjoying every minute of every day it's just it's so amazing to be able to sit and even to sit in meditation peacefully yeah um, and actually feel good about doing that and actually feel at peace with myself I think it's important. I think feeling at peace with yourself is extremely important. Yeah. You've got to feel at complete ease with you as a person mm. and know that things have happened in your life that you can't change yeah. and things are going to happen in your future. But as long as you're at peace with that and you you can accept that is when you can move forward as a, as a person and you can actually start to appreciate and start being more present in your life. I think people, they want to try and look at the past and previous things that have happened to them and almost play the victim to that. I know I've done it. I think yeah. a lot of people do it also. You want to play the victim and go, oh, this has happened again, this has happened again, and you just you feel really low. And then you always think, oh, when's this going to happen again? Because I'm <laughs> expecting it to happen again. You get to that point, and then yeah. it's like, oh, just be present, just be content with yourself, be happy yeah. within yourself, feel mm. good about yourself. Because if you don't, no one else is going to. You, <sighs> no one else is going to do that. Yeah, for sure. It's um, it's so much. Like the more I go on, go on, and continue to do, you know, all the stuff that you just talked about, I see that it's it's really when we're so obsessed with another person because that's where you know a lot of people have this issue is is you're so fixated on somebody that you actually don't even see your inside chaos. You can feel it, but you don't realize your inside chaos is, is what's creating this external thing. So I, today I understand the more you meditate and you get calm and peaceful, the more that echoes itself and creates much better relationships, much better jobs, much better interaction with your money much better interaction with your body and your body weight and all these things so the the peace level within you the calm level within you it's because so often we have so much anxiety so much fear so much stress so much feeling of abandonment all this stuff and that is driving all these weird actions like over contacting like you know I mean, I get emails from people that bombard people with a hundred phone calls a day or a hundred texts a day wow. because there is just this drive because you're not calm and you're not at peace and you're acting from that place within you. Yeah. So, and if you continue to do that, the person just goes, oh, I'm out of here. You're freaking me out, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, that, and that happens so often where people block you, cut contact and do all this stuff. Like no one blocks you unless you've been totally overwhelming. They don't. People don't yeah. need to block you unless you've been like that. Otherwise, yeah. they just wouldn't, they wouldn't need to do it. Absolutely. So, yeah, I completely agree. you know, and I hear that a lot. People have blocked me. People have, you know, removed me from their Facebook, unfriended me, done this, done this, done this. But it's like, well, that's a byproduct of what you've been doing. And like you say, no one else can do it for you, Joe. It is literally a job between you and you. You've got to face all the dark corners inside you with a flashlight. Yeah, absolutely. I, can, I couldn't agree more. Um, but once you get to that point and you, you remove almost like all those inside demons, that's when things can start looking up. 
I mean, yeah. it's it's difficult to battle it from from a place of not loving yourself. Mm. And we talk about it all the time. And I didn't I didn't realise I was like, oh yeah, oh here's a self lover. And I, I was like that at the start. And I think a lot yep. of people, almost everyone, are like that. Yep. They, they see that as a chore. Mm. They see it's it as a job. chore, loving yourself, and you're like, yep. no, it's, it, at first it is, and then you're like, no, because if I don't, how can I expect anyone else to love me back? How mm-hmm. how can I expect that? It's it's yeah. and that and it's that mentality in itself comes from a place of needing it. Yep. So it's just, mm-hmm. and when you need it from a place of t- total lack, then you're never going to have it because it's not, as we say, it's not on the outside. It's yeah. all on the inside. And then when you get to that point of having it on the inside, as we say, everyone's you pushed out, it comes on the outside because you are that it's mm. you are that state, as Nebo talks about changing states. Yeah. People think that it's the people think that it's the person or it's the, the actual outside, the physical entity of, of a of a person that brings them that love. And it's not. It's mm-hmm. all here. It's all within mm-hmm. me. I'm I've got to be in that state of consciousness of where I know what love is. Mm. And I know how to feel it, and I know how to feel it without anything making me feel it. I can have things that can help it. I can have activities. You can have all these things that bring about love, but you've got to feel that inside first. You've got to know. You've got to know exactly how to feel that without anything making it happen. You yep. need to feel that within, and it's yeah. it's so important. I said something um, the other day. I was talking to obviously a few people who follow the channel and um, I was talking to the guy and I said and it was interesting it was such an intuitive comment I was talking about the, the journey of the of yourself a specific person and um, I'd said it was quite an interesting comment I said I don't send love with a like a return ticket attached to it you don't it? do it with, with a return what? ticket a return ticket attached ah, to it a return ticket attached yeah Exactly. People think people yeah. give to get, and I think you see it so much like that. If I give this, I'll get back, and it's no. Yeah. You give to yourself, and you made you answered my question on it perfectly a few weeks ago. It's the exact same thing. You you give to yourself. You radiate. Yeah. You flow. You go in that state. You feel that state as much as you can, as often as you can throughout mm-hmm. the day. And when you get to a point where you feel like it's it's not working, it's Sometimes I found myself, if I feel like it's not working, I'll ask myself, well, what's not working? If you feel good about yourself, mm. do you need anything to change on the outside? You don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, yep. you don't need that on the outside. You think, yeah. oh, if I do this and I do all this work, then I will get. And you're like, no, I, know. Yeah. I will get from the outside. And it's like, no, I don't need to get from the outside. No. I want, I want that from the outside, but I don't need it from the outside. I need it from yeah. the inside. And when I get it from the inside, is then it will come on the outside. And I don't yeah. concern myself myself with how, yep. when, if, and what. Um, but it's so important that I feel that myself. Yeah. Um, and I think it's imp- I, what I found as well. For me, a big technique that I think would help a lot of yours is meditation. Um, yeah. Meditation is so important. It's it's become a daily part of my life. I'll, I'll yeah. meditate at least half an hour in the morning before I go to work. Yeah. Um, at least half an hour at night before I go to sleep. Yeah. Maybe a couple of times during the day. Mm. Um, just depending on whether I feel like it. Yeah. Um, but at first, again, that started out like a chore. Mm. It was like it start, but people don't appreciate it because they'll maybe do it for say a week, two weeks, yep. and they'll go. They get impatient, and it's like, oh, it's not working. I don't feel any different. I don't feel any different. And you're like, no. Yeah. Well, if you've been feeling this way for ten years. It's, it's not going to take 10 days exactly. to heal from it. It's not going to take, it, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't yep. work that way at all. Mm. It's going to take as long as it takes because you've got to get through all this, all this clutter of bad thoughts, of bad feelings, bad emotions to get to a point of calm and a mm. point of peace within. Yeah. And you've, you've just got to work at it. It is, and it is work, but it's, enjoyable it, it becomes enjoyable it, it does, does. Become enjoyable it does because no one outside me is making me do this i'm doing this because i i owe it to myself to treat myself better yeah and now i'm treating myself better i'm not worried about it i don't worry about anything um and any time worrying thoughts do come up 
it, what actually happens is it's as you say that as well it's it's just practice it's it's like working out that muscle the the, the yeah. awareness mu- it's just you become so aware of when you're descending back into that you do and much stop. and you're not as tolerant of that space anymore yeah exactly and then as soon as you as soon as you notice that thought coming in you go wait a minute this is going to bring me back to where i don't want to be that is that's not me i re- uh, I acknowledge the thoughts came in. I acknowledge that it, why it's happened, but I'm not sticking with it because it's not me. I yeah. let that pass, and I'll think about something really good. Um, actually, a couple of weeks ago, it happened. I was going through some changes in work, and it was quite difficult to take. Um, it was quite. It was stuff like they were changing systems, and it, it was really frustrating for me individually. And then there was other things happening outside my personal life. And I took a step back. I was like, wait a minute, what is going on inside me that's making this happen? There, there must be something there. So I meditated on it, let it pass, and it was like that feeling of instantly, within a, a couple of days, that feeling of not feeling loved, yeah. not feeling worthy, feeling completely unworthy, yeah. brought about these circumstances. And I'm like, wow. that was, And that was just a brief thought yeah. that was allowed. It almost slipped through the net. Yeah. And it it got back in for a couple of days, and then when I noticed that happening, I was like, "No, that's that's not me." And then the work circumstances actually changed for the better since then. Other things on the outside have changed for the better, but I changed it straight away because I noticed what was going on inside. People, it they get into such a habit of letting the thoughts take control. I think the people get into the habit of just accepting the thoughts for what they are, or accepting the thoughts as like the reality of what is, and they just accept the, the circumstances around the thoughts, mm. and they accept the external, and they just accept life as is, and it's like, no, you can change it, no one yeah. else is going to change it unless you change it, yeah. you've got to change your life, you can't change anyone else's, no one mm. else can change yours, it's all about you, and some people th- might think, oh, well, that's selfish, yeah, it is, but you've got to care about yourself, you have got to care about yourself. And it is a daily practice. It's it's a yeah. really and it's a really important daily practice as well. Mm. It is, and you know, the, the the sentence "thoughts are things" has been said many times. A thought goes out, and it literally, like a suction cap on an octopus, it suction caps onto something, and it pulls yeah. it in. So you, your thoughts, you know, when you look back, when you were unconscious of all this type of knowledge. You just used to let your head roam around doing whatever it wanted for as long as it wanted. And then you were thinking, look what happened to me. Look what happened to me. Look what happened. Why is this going on? Why is that person doing that? But you had no idea that what you were thinking was a projection and then it actually pulled in experiences. Now that you know that, you go, wow, I'm not letting this do what it wants. I'm going to give it a job to do rather than it gives me a job. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to take it. And then it's at that point you take control. Oh. And when you get that control back of yourself, it just makes such a huge difference on the outside. It makes such a massive difference to your daily life because you are controlling what you think about. And when you control about you, what you think about, you then get feelings attached to it. Yeah. And then when that happens, that's for me is when the magic happens. That's when all the things start conforming to what you think about. Yeah. It's, and it's uh, it's so it's liberating as well to know that you've got that control over you. But people, yeah. as we've spoke about, they want to control the outside. They want to, and I've done it. I've done it for years. You try and micromanage situations, and you try and take control. You try to take control of everything outside you because you need all the pieces to fit. Mm. It's like you think it's just like pieces in the jigsaw, and you try and make you try and force pieces in, so you try and control things, and at which point you can't control anything on the outside. It's all happening because of what's going on inside. So when you're feeling low, and you're feeling like we said unworthy, mm. things happen outside of you that makes that a thing. But when you're doing it unconsciously, you mm. accept the external facts as the reality you accept everything out with that's happening to you mm. as is and you like you said we do it people do it unconsciously so many that's people true. do it unconsciously and that's what neville wrote about when he wrote seed time in the harvest you plant seeds that you that are unlovely 
and you forget. And then when something happens, you go, hang on a minute. I didn't plant that, but you did. Otherwise it wouldn't have showed up. So you exactly. forget. that's actually a really good um, Neville, you know, a lecture to, to listen to that about seed time in the harvest. I mean, yeah. everything about Neville's good, really. <laughs> I've yet to find something that I don't <laughs> agree with and I don't think I'm ever going to. Yeah. He makes so much sense. It's fantastic. I it's, know. It's, it's when, when you actually get involved in to listening to his lectures, even mm. I think even his voice in some of the lectures is just, it draws you in. Does because there's, there's such knowledge, there's just such knowledge mm. behind it, and um, in particular for me, all he's hearing all these stories, as well as you've said, the law and the promise for yeah. me, all the success stories and the power of awareness is yeah. just as good, yeah, because they're um, yeah, they're, they're fascinating from like a little kid manifesting a puppy, yes, to um, to someone manifesting you know, um, selling the house, it's yep. just it's incredible. It's, but people put so much, you know, there's, people put so much focus on outside of us to give us this feeling of security, mm. this feeling of, you know, yeah. these success stories are all really good because I use them as inspiration also. I still do use them yeah. as inspiration. I'll listen, yeah. I'll listen to Neville driving to work. I'll have it on in the car. Yeah. It's a 50 minute drive and I managed to get in a little bit of a lecture, but enough that I can take in. Yeah, and it's the same driving home. Whenever I get a chance to, whenever I'm driving anywhere, I'll put Neville on, and it's just to to let that drill in. And these stories, they're really good inspiration to get to a point. And it's like you've said it before; these are all normal people who've done this. Yep, they're not. There's nothing special about them. No, they're, they're not pretty, celebrities. They're no. not. You know, they're just every day like you and yeah. me. Yeah. yeah, and they've just done the work. They've just yeah. done the work, and they've done the work inside, and they've felt it to be real. And they've let it, they've just let it grow. Mm. Um, and I think that's important as well, that when you plant the seed, as Neville says it, when you plant the seed, don't dig in to see if it's grown, yeah. to see when it's going to grow. Yeah. You would never do that if you were <laughs> planting a flower. Mm. You would just let it grow. And then once it grows is when you get the results. And that's ultimately your manifestation. Um, yeah. It will take It will take as long as it takes. But as long as you occupy that feeling of having what you want, that's when it happens. That mm-hmm. it's at that point, I believe, is when it happens. Yeah. Um, but again, this it's all you know. It's been smaller manifestations for me, but there's no focus on the manifestation anymore. There's focus on wanting it and and believing I have it, but there's no focus on where it is. Mm-hmm. And that that change has happened for me around about the time I sent you the question of the unconditional love mm-hmm. at that point it was yeah i'm i'm in a point now where i don't i'm not worried about this i am actively not worried about this because i believe it to be so and daily conversations go on in my head i'm not going to go into detail about what's said but yeah. daily conversations go on in my head that back up what i want and there's not a lot of i don't use a lot of the senses it's maybe just sight and sound okay and I, not, like, I like you're actively not worried that'd make a good t-shirt <laughs> keep calm actively keep. not worried <laughs> <laughs> oh, i like how you put those words together uh it's true That's a good one yeah, it's true though. You, you. I think the more you spend them worry, all it does is creates yeah. worrying circumstances, though, doesn't it? You, mm. The more you, you spend may, them worrying. You may as well do Ho'oponopono. You may as well repeat, I am loved. You may as well repeat, I'm secure, I'm wanted, than engaging and fueling the worry. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Do something um, else. Do something. Okay, the worry's going to come for some of us on certain subjects. We go, okay, hang on, it's kicking in. What am I going to do now? Yeah, and you you consciously do it to stop it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was um based on that we talk about affirmations. I mean, for me, I didn't really use a lot of them. If I'm honest, I didn't use affirmations so much. You know, everyone has different techniques that works yeah. for them that gets them to a point. But yeah. what happens? I think when there's so many techniques, people too try nice. them all. They try them all, mm-hmm. but again, that's all about trying too hard. Yeah. So it's. I think it's important. You almost build up a little toolkit for yourself. Like, yep. what, like you know, it's not like it's not one size fits all. You no. build up a little toolkit for yourself, and you go right. What What can I get out of this? Mm. 
what, what's going does this help me and if it does how does it help me and then yeah. i'm just going to stick with that i mean for me meditation um and living in the end yeah uh are the two big ones for me that that's a that's that's mm. pretty much all i use mm. and throughout the day there's enough conversations going on in my head and and that's it that is all i do i don't i used to use affirmations yeah um and I don't use them so much anymore, but I, I used them at first, and then um, I just I just stopped using them. I didn't feel like that I was getting much out of them, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so affirmations, I, I used it first as well, and again, I didn't believe it to be true. And okay. it wasn't until meditation and living in the end when I came across that and realized how important that was, to mm-hmm. how, how good it was at triggering the feeling is when I started using that more frequently. So okay. it's self-love meditations at first. I'll still do self-love meditations. I'll still do maybe once or t- one or two a day. There's yeah. one in particular I'm going through. Um, I'll send you a link uh, that I've been doing. It's uh, Eric Ho. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, 15, it's a 15 minute. Yes, I sent it to someone this week. I know the one you mean. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's, yeah. I've, I've, I've been doing that now for a fortnight. Yeah. Um, every morning and every night and it's wow even that's just raised my energy so much just yeah it's actually helped as well with the inner conversation it's it it helps in so many different aspects mm. and it was round about then was when I, I was feeling unloved and I was the stuff was going on in work as I spoke about earlier yeah. that was when I discovered that meditation and mm. since then work's been fantastic things have just been happening that's been so good yeah. so that in itself just brought about so much joy for me it's a it's a magical yeah med- it's really really so good mm-hmm. um but yeah self-love I've never neglected since starting and you, you can't neglect it because mm. for me neglecting that's like neglecting yourself yeah it's neglecting you as a person mm. you don't get any results from that because you've got to care about you. You've got to put you first. Yeah. Before everything. And I think Joe, that's the reason why a lot of people that just do living in the end or imagination creates reality from Neville and it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. I think it's because the self love is the missing piece underneath it. I agree. Yeah, I completely because agree. Neville doesn't talk about self love, but he does talk about changing states. So he would if you do it in Neville terms, you're changing states from feeling unloved to loved. Your love yes. state is the new man, as he would say. Um, Abraham Hicks talks more about you have to feel, you got to feel good. She talks a lot about feeling good and she talks a lot about the art of allowing. So she doesn't per se talk about self-love either. It was more Louise Hay that really taught. She's the godmother of self-love. Yeah. That was her piece. It's like all these different people and teachers kind of give us a new piece. Yeah. But I've kind of got it down to visually. It's like um, it's like a stool with with three legs. You've got to know everyone's you pushed out. You have yeah. to know about doing your self love, and you've got to practice living in the end. And yeah. if you can do those three things you've yeah. pretty much got a really good toolbox to start with, but it's easy to forget everyone's you pushed out. It's easy to forget to do your self love meditations. It's easy to forget when you're in a problem to focus on a solution. So it's like, you got to, you know, yeah. somewhere. I always get a visual of a three legged stool and I go, okay, which one have I forgotten? And I just yeah. go, okay, I'm focused on the other person. Okay. Ah, that's right. That that's they're me. Okay. So what have I got to work on? Ah, if you've got to work on you, you've got to work on your self-love because you're fixated on they're not doing something that yeah. I think they should be doing, which means you've totally dropped the ball in the self-love area and you're trying to get them to be different. They don't need to be different. You need to be different. So it's working back. And then once you've worked out, okay, I'm fixing, fixed my self-love, done my meditation, done my affirmations, my scripting, whatever bits and pieces I like to do to get that in place, then I live in the solution and I disengage from the problem. Turn away, turn away, turn away. So I always get that image when I think, okay, which piece am I missing? Three-legged stool, which one of those legs have I forgotten? And then I just go forth and break those three things down and you get faster and faster and faster at it. So you dissolve and you dissolve problems more quickly if there's any or you prepave them and you don't have to do revision or any of that stuff to correct things later. 
you yeah. feel it beforehand. So it gets faster. The, the ability to do that gets faster. You maintaining your peace and your self-love is more constant. Yep. Absolutely. And then, and then life just gets so much easier. It oh does. Goodness, so much I, easier. I was just about to say that. I think, I mean, that, that analogy with the, the soul with three legs is fantastic. It's yeah. really, really good. Mm. I was just about to say that. The more you practice it, as we say, it's consistent practice. Mm. It becomes a natural state. It becomes a natural state of being. And as Neville talks about shedding the old man and putting on the new man, that yeah. is that shift of state. Yeah. Um, and again, I go back to when people try to be perfectionists and they, they criticize themselves mm. for not feeling this state 24-7 yeah. because there's still a sense of lack. There's still a part of them that lacks something from the outside. They mm. still want the outside to happen faster. They want it yeah. now. They want it now. They want it now. To they happen don't. faster. Yeah, I yeah. get, oh, Joe, that is the one question I get so often. How can I make this happen faster? Yeah. And if when when you're ask, if you if you dissect that question, yep. when you're asking that question to start, yep. it shows that you are so unhappy with yourself. Yeah, and the turtle yeah. wins the race, not Absol the rabbit. That's a rabbit question, not a turtle question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like if I do this, will will they will the person come back tomorrow or the day after or next week because yeah. I really want them? You like, no, 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 yeah. no. You've got, it, you've got it upside down. You've got yes. it You've got it back to front. But again, you get that mm. point where you, it just becomes natural. You just It does. Really and, and, I, and I understand those questions because that's part of the journey when you are still wounded, rejected, feeling really unloved and unwanted. We all ask those questions. We all start there. And that's, that's normal because yeah. you, you are where you are in your mental state after that event has happened to you. But then you start to move up and you raise yourself up and you call upon your power and you use Neville's teachings, Abraham's teachings, meditation, self-love to rise up to be the self-sufficient internal person from the inside person that you can be. Yeah, absolutely. And it's yeah. all about it's about harnessing that feeling within and feeling secure within yourself, feeling yeah. that love within yourself, knowing that you are worth anything that you can almost feeling invincible that you can do anything you want because it's true. Yeah. I think I can't remember who said the quote, but it was one that really stood out to me. It was um it said whether you believe you can or you believe you can't either way you're right you're right mm -hmm. and it's i can't remember who it was that said it but it's such, yeah. such a good quote because it's so true yeah it's it's all about having that belief within yourself that you can create anything that you want you can create any life that you want yeah. but people myself included used to get this way where you get too wrapped up in the how yeah how when um if all these questions you ask yourself, well, mm. if I'm doing this, what do I need to do? You almost try and manipulate the situations. You think, right, I need to then go and do this outside because this mm. is how this is going to unfold. And it's like, no, just mm. let it unfold. Let mm. let the situation unfold in its highest path. Mm. Let, it, let it all unfold the way it's going to unfold because that is, by allowing that to happen, I yeah. think you get a point where it creates the excitement. It creates. Yeah. And you get amazing manifestations like yeah. mind blowing stuff that you go. I never even would have thought about that. I remember once I was doing this affirmation. You've just reminded me. It's doing this affirmation. The unexpected happens. My seemingly impossible good now comes to pass. It's an affirmation from Florence Scovel Shin. I was reading her book. Uh, the Game of Life or Your Word is Your Wand, one of those books she wrote. So I found mm -hmm. this affirmation. I thought, wow, cool. That is a really big open-ended affirmation. The unexpected happens. My seemingly impossible good now comes to pass. And I remember thinking, my life is so crap right now. If anything amazingly unexpected could happen, that would be mind-blowingly incredible. Anyway, yeah. I, did, I used to walk to work and back. 30 minutes each way. So I was doing this one affirmation for about, I don't know, two or three weeks, solidly an hour a day, one affirmation. Anyway, I got this phone call from this guy and no, firstly I got a call from a woman 
and she wanted someone who had candle experience. I worked in this tiny little candle shop and somehow she tracked me down. I don't know how. And she ended up paying for me to fly to another city. She gave me this large sum of money, paid for my hotel, paid for my um, uh, flights, everything. Never even met the woman. We did all this by phone. We had two conversations. Wow. So that happened from doing that one affirmation. A, a very short time later, less than a month, if I remember correctly, a guy I met who was a multimillionaire flew me to another state in Australia and he said to me, I want someone to choose some tiles and different things for, I bought this apartment block and I need some help with all of that. He paid for all my flights, all my accommodation and paid me to do the job. And I was at this time working this tiny little job. I wasn't even earning $400 a week. Wow. So that one affirmation created these two unbelievably unexpected things unexpected happens my seemingly impossible good and i remember going that was one of my moments where i just thought holy heck i just did one affirmation really effortlessly for 30 minutes on the way to work 30 minutes back while i'm going yeah. to this job that i don't really want to go to but i'm going to do my best because they're paying my bills and i did that on my days off, I think I was working three days a week or four days a week. So I did those trips on my three to four days off and it all fit together, dovetailed together really simply. But I remember thinking there is something really powerful about this. This, yeah. is, this is really the realm of like what you're talking about. Let go of the how. Who cares? Because there is something even more incredible than you can imagine. And that, that example really showed me the power of thought, the power of words and changing the thought into a belief. Cause I think I changed it into a belief enough that it created those two experiences within a very short period of time. I'll never forget that. It was amazing. That's incredible. That yeah. is, is so, but again, when that comes from doing it without expectation, there's no expectation. There wasn't result. because there's I didn't no have any idea of what was unexpected or what could even be possible. Cause I was just working a very, small uh, underpaid retail job in a very small town you know an hour and a half out of sydney australia so it was really yeah. kind of not very busy yeah. and trying to get work there wasn't that exciting so mm -hmm. you know the, yeah. the that calling forth and summoning that affirmation yeah it was like woohoo that was yeah. pretty cool let's do that again you know yeah you summoned you summoned the unexpected <laughs> I did. And that's, and that's, I was like, you says the affirmation was my yeah. unexpected happens and you're yeah. like, wow. Yeah. And that, that in itself, it's true. You almost have that little, it's like a eureka moment, isn't it? It the, was. The I found with the, with the, the manifestation to lock Woman, it was the exact same. Yeah. It was like, there's something to this. This hasn't happened by chance. This yeah. has been something that's been triggered within me mm. to then again, like I says, get up that day and go a drive it was like another, another drive for so to lock home and it just it, it just all fit into place yeah and it was like yeah there's something to this this isn't this isn't just happened by chance i've been taken here for a reason yeah and you end up all these little things just start happening yeah, I know. And there, was, there was something that happened also when a manifestation i had that was um this is kind of round about the start when i started having fun with it um i was actually uh driving to work one day and I had the thought, it was just a thought of, I'd love someone in work to, to gift me something. I don't know who it's going to be. I yeah. don't know how it's going to come about. <laughs> I don't really know. I don't really care. But I would love this to happen. It would be quite cool. This is obviously playing with the process. About a week or so later, um, my my colleague in work, he came in and he's like, right, I'm going to buy everyone breakfast. And I'm like, oh, Okay, I didn't. I didn't think about it at the time. I forgot about it. I actually forgot about what I was trying to manifest. I totally forgot about it. And he said the reason he got it, he got a football bet up, and he was feeling generous, so he bought everyone breakfast and worked that morning. And I was like, and then he told me, he told me the, <laughs> the um, the mechanics, the mechanics of how the bet came up, 
and he'd been doing this this same bet over and over again. Um, and the one he wanted to put on for a specific match, he couldn't get on, so he had to change it. And changing it got him his bet up, which made him all this money to then buy everyone breakfast. Wow. And I was like, all these things fall into play, and you can't even begin to imagine, to imagine how that's yeah. going to come about. But that's not yeah. your place. That's not your part in the, yeah. in the process. You yeah. don't play any part in it. You, yeah. you get the, the results. You get the benefit at the end of it. You don't yeah. play any part in how and when and mm. if that's going to come about. You just believe and, that it is. Joe, do you remember, I don't know if you read, there was Neville where he described his, uh, where he was in the army and he wanted to get out. He yes. Talk, okay, so he talks about that how he didn't want to be in the army, he didn't agree with it, he didn't quite say it in those words because that would have been a polit politically incorrect to say that at that time, but you can tell by the way he describes the story, he didn't want to have anything to do with the war. Yes. And he said he imagined himself in the bed at home with his little daughter in the cot and his wife laying in the bed and they slept in two single beds. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, really he's, <laughs> so he's describing this. And he said that uh, the bit that, of that story that was a real jewel was he said that the application was denied. So he said, I didn't push against the world of Caesar. And he moved yeah. and he went back to his room. Anyway, he talked about how he just continued to imagine he was sleeping back in, in his home, in his own bed. And then he gets called back in and then the guys got the application and he said, Neville, do you still want to be do you still want to leave the army and he's going yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah so he stamps the thing and he is discharged from the army but the sentence that really stuck with me was that he said that the colonel had no idea that he was under the influence of exactly imaginal scene yeah and he talks about how when you imagine that the players assemble themselves like actors in a play to yes. deliver to you your desire. And I loved how he worded that because it's true. And that's how that unexpected happens thing happened for me. I didn't assemble any images. The how was totally not even in my consciousness. It was one affirmation and to really believe that it was possible was what I was working at, not trying to create two people paying for my airfares and sending me all over the country. Yeah. yeah. You know? So that it was the same. I remember thinking, ah, oh, these people have assembled themselves because they're under the power of my influence from me really affirming and creating something. They don't even know that they've been, they've got an impulse to contact me. Yeah. That it's coming from me. Yeah. Absolutely. That was amazingly fascinating to me, the mechanics of all that when I mm -hmm. dissected it, looked at it, you know, and, and again, letting go of the how, letting go of control, letting go of how you think it should happen, all that stuff. That's where the most amazing manifestations have happened for me is letting go of how and when. That has been huge. Yeah, letting go is massive. And I yeah. think people, and I know I've done it at the start as well, you, you think letting go means giving up. You just you just associate letting go with giving up. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's, it's, not, it's not giving up because... No. Giving up would be giving up on yourself as well. So it's and giving up on your desire. You're not giving up on the desire. You're letting, you're giving up, if you can want to use those terms, yeah. you're giving up your worry. You're giving up your negative thought processes. You're giving up your, how's this going to happen? When's it going to happen? I need to make it happen. How can yeah. I push this into shape? You're letting go of all that and you just have the pure nut of the desire still Absolutely. intact. Because as, as you say, with the one with what you manifested um, in those two weeks or whatever, how long, however long it was, where you yeah. are doing that affirmation, you're building belief, yeah. which is then growing into your consciousness, and then that's naturally you naturally believe that mm. that's happened. And as soon as as you you probably won't looking back, you'll be able to say that, but at the time you probably didn't realise, but. I you were didn't. just consciously believing that it was a thing, that the unexpected did happen. Mm. You didn't know what, what that was going to be, how that was going to come about, but you knew no. it was, you just knew that it had happened in yeah. past tense. You knew it had happened. And I think yeah. that, again, that's just, you almost, you almost subliminally lived in the end. 
because mm. you were saying that it had happened. Yeah, you something know, it, amazing had happened. So yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. um, it's. I think one thing that's important as well. I think it's going to be really important for people listening. Um, people get wrapped up, I think, on the concept of free will, and I think Neville summarizes it perfectly. Yeah. People think free will is a case. They almost frown upon it. I think a lot of people who don't understand it frown upon it, saying, "Well, that that other person or whatever that may be, they have free will to choose." But they don't understand. I don't think they understand what free will is. And I think Neville, Neville, as I said, summarizes it perfectly. It's the free will to choose the state within you to occupy. That's what the free will. The free will is. It's not. It's you can obviously people have their own, um, their own impulsive decisions, their own mind to make up. Mm. But the story that. Of, rearrange the mind I think is the lecture where he talks about it because he says it's the law of liberty yeah and he says about the colonel he didn't he had no idea it was under his influence yeah but that's exactly it yeah they, they, it's an unconscious influence he thought mm. he probably thought in his head that colonel probably thought in his head I'm going to do I'm going to let this guy go because he doesn't he doesn't want to be here I'm going to do the nice thing I'm going to do the right thing yeah and I'm he was actually right. very fond of Neville he said you know of any of the people that he said something to the effect of any of the people that I would like to be next to yeah. when I'm in the army, it's you, Neville. So he was, exactly. he was highly regarded by this man, which was really lovely. But Yeah, but that's exactly it. You, you get wrapped up in that. Um, mm. yeah, I think, yeah, the that story's perfect. That one's really good. But in that point that he makes about he had no idea he was under the influence of my imagination. Yeah. But they don't. No, no one does. And that doesn't, I don't think personally, that manipulates the concept of free will because that but, that's conforming. Yes, it's conforming. But I do want to say this because I've said it before because I've had lots of emails about people saying, well, then that means if I've got a specific person, then I can make them love me. It's, it's power of influence. It's not the ability to control. Yes. And I want to make yes. that really clear. You cannot make somebody... If they don't want to, they choose to accept or, or reject what you yes. say. And I know I did a YouTube about that and people freaked out, but I'm going to say it again. You do not have the right to control people. No, you don't. Yeah. You absolutely don't. I mean, yeah. like you said, it does conform. But I think yeah. for me, when you, try to con when you try to control, that's when you try to make things happen on the outside yeah. again. And you that's from need. That's yeah. again coming back to being needy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I says, I think Neville's concept of free will is fantastic mm. because it's that case of you have, everyone has free will to occupy the state desired. That's yeah. how he describes free will. He also says about free will that the, it's the law of assumption that trumps everything. Yes, that's right. I remember watching your video um, yeah. with, with Dan. Yeah. Um, and it says that you said the same thing that the yeah. assumption trumps it all. And that's but true. The assumption trumps everything. So whether you are assuming from a conscious place or assuming from, I'm just letting my head wander around because I'm not really conscious. Yeah. Your assumptions will trump the external every single time. So Neville assumed he was back in his flat. So the guy open the gate for him to exit yeah he agreed to it he however you want to see it visually he 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 absorbed neville's energy rocket if you say it in abraham yeah. Hicks terms yeah and then he the first time he didn't though that's right he said no denied stamp red stamp on the thing the second time, Neville went, okay, I was unsuccessful, but I will not give up. Like he could have gone, oh, well, everybody's in the army. No one has any choice. We have to defend the country. We have to, what can I do? He could have done that, but he went, no, I'm going to persist. Yes. You see that approved, 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 approved. And he continued. And that's what I think is a really important lesson. If you don't succeed straight away, you can continue but remember, you're not coming from... When he got the disapproval straight away, 
he didn't, you know, stand there with his hands on his hips or throw himself on the ground and start yelling and screaming. He accepted it graciously. He turned, he walked away and he went back to his room and he continued. So, and then he got that message in the night that said something about uh, um, do nothing. There was a a voice he heard or he saw something written. I can't remember the exact how he got the message, but he saw do nothing. Yeah. It held the world. Yeah. I held the world. Do nothing. Yeah. 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 So it's like you have to keep digging deeper in your concentration, in your discipline, in your focus, in your living in the end, Mm -hmm. but still remember that you don't have power of control. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's like you got to have a go at it, but still remember that people can reject and accept what you send. So it doesn't mean you have to not try. Yeah. Because in Neville's case, that was a great example of it being refused. And then the second go, he received his end result. So, yeah. yeah. But I think it's an, I, I honestly believe it's an energetic thing. It, it's so yeah. energetic that, that, that that entity, that person, that thing, that can feel what your intentions are. So when you're sending it, and I've done it at first as well, you, you thought, I'll send love, I'll send love, I'll send yeah. love. But it's all from a place of if I do this, it's gonna it's gonna rebound back to me. Yeah. And that's that's wrong. That is wrong. It's not it's not about that it's not coming unconditional. back to you. It's not unconditional. It's conditional. It's conditional. Absolutely. Yeah. One hundred percent. But people people do that thinking if I send, if I send, if I send, I will get I will get back. And it's like it's giving to get. It and is. In fact, it's it, it's so wrong. It should be yeah. a case of giving from a yeah. from a place of abundance. Exactly. You, you abundantly have this to give that, mm. and it's like. And I remember, I think I've seen one of your. Um, I can't remember if it was in a Q and A or something when you spoke about a specific person for you, and it was like I I don't care. that person said oh it's never going to work whatever it may be and you're like yeah. I don't care I'm I'm going to love you anyway. Yeah. And it's that and it's that I don't care I'm going to send you this anyway and but you put that you put that person in a place of you know a place of total of one hundred percent love. Yeah. It's like. I'd, and that, in its own ways, like Neville's story, where you don't you don't accept the word of Caesar. Yeah. You don't accept it. You accept yeah. your reality, and your reality is I'm going to love this person anyway. I'm going to do this anyway. anyway. Yeah. yeah. Regardless. And, it, and it's not okay, you know, because I do get a lot of emails. People saying I've been doing the radiating love meditation. I've been doing the projecting love meditation, and I'm doing it for a while. Nothing's happening yet. Well, then you're in conditional love then. There yeah. it is. So it's, it's like that's what the specific person is teaching you to give love unconditionally. That's the little lesson, the little nut, the little nugget within that not coming back to you. It's you yeah. learning. It's not about them replying. It's about you learning about unconditional love. That's the other side of the lesson. That's the powerful lesson. That's the biggest lesson. Definitely. And it's, yeah. it's such a valuable lesson to learn. But once you learn it and you accept it, yeah. it, it just opens up so many possibilities. Um, I love the oh. story as well. I think one more thing based on Neville as well. I think people get wrapped up on the time taken for a manifestation yeah. so people get wrapped up and yes. well it's been so long and it, it automatically triggers a belief so they have this it's been so long mm. um i don't think this is going to work because it's been too long and it's like no because the the best story i've seen to combat that was neville's when he talks about the woman who was um kicked out of her daughter-in-law a daughter-in-law's home yeah she sent presents for like two years and nothing was returned she sent stuff yeah to try and make her way back in and then every night before sleep, she imagined receiving two letters, one from yeah. the a grandson and one from the daughter-in-law. Yeah. And every single night, she imagined this, and f- she imagined holding the letter in her hand. She imagined reading the words, and she, it just triggered this really good feeling of, of love. And again, that is, that's self-love also. It's enough to get that feeling of love. Yeah. And then after eight days, she got two letters. Yeah. She got two letters, one, a letter enclosed in another one mm-hmm. from the grandson and one from the daughter-in-law. And you're like, that's just, it's so simplistic, but it's so true. She got an uh, of love and of having received this letter that it just felt so good. And again, that daughter-in-law wasn't under, didn't realize she'd have been under the influence. Of the woman of writing, the, writing yeah. the story, yeah. Exactly, yeah. she assumed she, and again, that's where assumption trumps all. Yeah. She assumed she had the letters, she felt it to be real. And again, she probably, as Neville said, heard the word, do nothing. 
just do nothing. Do nothing. And yeah. I love that, do nothing. It's true, but yeah. people think, and I think you speak about it a lot with, with Dan as well, where it's like, right, what have I got to do to make this happen? Mm. And there is absolutely nothing you can do. Nothing and, you can and, do. On and time. inactivity is one of the hardest parts to learn. As it's, it, I mean, for me at the first, it was yeah. so difficult. Yeah. It, was, it almost felt like, there was a frustration and there was an impatience of if I don't do anything now this is never going to come about yeah. it's never going to happen it's never going I to happen know. and and that whole thing of surrender letting go and allowing I mean Esther talks about allowing so beautifully but the art of allowing it is an art because we are as humans go okay well what can I do yeah <laughs> we just instantly go okay I'm ready. What can I do? I'm an action figure. Yeah, you know? action figure. Exactly. <laughs> I was just about to say that. You're an action figure. It's true. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, okay, how can I lean back and just wait with a knowing that I am allowing? That yeah. is one of the most powerful things you can do. And you can do that through meditation. You learn exactly. that better in meditation, definitely. Yeah, meditation. Wow. Yeah, it's fantastic. I could talk about Neville for <laughs> hours and hours all right. and hours. All right. So, Joe, because this yes. is already one hour and 18, how about, we, <laughs> how about we do a part two? Oh, that sounds fantastic. Let's I'm do so, a part two, yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. Before we go, tell me about, remember when you and I were talking before we were recording, you mentioned some books. Can you just mention that first? Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, it was um, for those that... <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you regain your your composure. Okay. But yeah. The, the um the books. Yes. Um. It's for anyone who wants to you know listen and like to try and understand Neville, but they they get wrapped up too much, and because he talks a lot about Christianity and he talks a lot about the Bible, and people find it difficult to understand. I know at first I did. Yeah. Um. So I came across these books recently, and it was uh, from an author called uh, Rita Faith. And she writes, she's wrote four books and the, it's a simplistic breaking down of Neville's, um, of Neville's teachings. So she, she puts quotes in from him and then she gives insight on the quotes. Okay. So they're really, really good books as I'll send you the links on also. But cool. um, three of the four are available on ebook. And one's only a physical copy, but I've bought the three ebooks, and they're quite short reads. They're only about maybe sixty pages okay. um, each. So they're quite short reads, um, but they're really good. There's one part in particular she speaks about, um, like you know, you've all, you've got to die to the old state. Yeah. You you give yourself up to like to the new state, and people might see that as going mad, but it's actually you go mad to the new state. You, you go insane to the new state and you yeah. die to your old state of consciousness. Mm. Um, but she she really breaks it down really well. Mm. Um, it's really, really, right. really interesting. So I think it'd be helpful for the viewers. Yep. But um, definitely up for doing a part two at some point, I think. Um, mm. Yeah, I think it's been fantastic. I'm sure I'm... Yeah, I'm really, I've really enjoyed this. It's been a fantastic experience. Yeah, it's been it's good. been so good, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to get a lot of benefit out of it. Um, I think maybe a little bit harsh talking about the self love, saying that you've got to work at it, but it's so true. I can't stress it enough. I can't stress yeah. enough how you've got to feel good within, and you've got to accept within before yeah. you can see results without. For I think sure. self love and acceptance are the key points to take away. Self love and acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. Self-love and self-acceptance. Self-acceptance, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Self-acceptance, sure. yeah, yeah. You have to, you, you don't accept the outside as is. You accept yourself first. You yeah. love yourself and you accept yourself. Yeah. And from there, you've got a strong platform to build on. For sure. I think so. Now, can you say one word for me? F-R-U-I-T. Fruit. I love it. You said that at the beginning of the interview and I just spit in my head. I just love that word with your accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bizarre word to ask me to say. There's so many that us Scots time. have made say up. one more time. Fruit. Fruit. I love the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, I, I might have to put English, English subtitles below for this yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, if, if anyone... Want some subtitled? I'll do a transcript. I'll send it on. Oh, I don't 
um, do a transcript. Actually, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I don't know how to do them yet, but we can work it out. Yeah, I might actually have a word with Eric Cole because I think he puts in his videos that he wants people to translate them into different languages. Yeah. So well, I think I've he would to translate got, Scottish. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, translate into Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because I've got, I was, yesterday, I was, looking at the analytics on the channel and I clicked on the community tab and I thought, oh, I forget what's in here, I clicked on that. And it had about 10 of my videos, 10 to 12 translated into Czech, into Spanish, into Italian, into French, into um, Arabic. And I thought, wow. unreal. So there is a link in the description of every single one of my YouTubes that you can click on that. I've set it on, on the on so that Everybody yeah. can go in and translate my YouTubes if they want. I think it's such a lovely thing if your country is not doing law of attraction yeah. on a big scale that, you know, you can actually translate and get, get some information to, you know, I've heard in Israel there's not a lot on the law of attraction and the, there's a couple of people in Israel that were looking at it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's good. I mean, it's fun. It's fun. So yeah, it I'm is. sure we can do it in English then. Joe. I was just about to say, but let's <laughs> translate this one into English for everyone, for the world, and then take it from there. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's, I also want to add as well before we, before we wrap up, um, the, the, I think I'm really all about kind of helping people. So yeah. you know, I'd be willing to answer questions from anyone um okay. on the video I, I, I quite i keep an eye on the comments and uh, videos also to help people um yeah. so if anyone's got any questions um i'll keep an eye on comments and i'll try and Beautiful. answer people because i want to help i want people to get to this point where i'm feeling about themselves yeah. and i want to help anyone to do that and i think that having that level of altruism for anyone, I think it's yeah. an important thing to have, and I'm willing to help anyone in any step yeah. that they're pay at. It, pay it forward. Pay yeah, it forward. Absolutely. I yeah. remember. I remember thinking that too, when I wrote my first book. I said to myself, ten or fifteen years before, when I read one of Neville's books, "Wow, I love all these stories." One day, when I've got my act together, I want to collect my own stories. And yeah. that's what created my first book was reading Neville's and being inspired because I wanted to do stories that were more current in this, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was 2009 then when I started. So, but I wanted stories that were current to this time. Yes. And, um, yeah. So it's good to pay it forward, whether it's in story form, in YouTube form, in helping people in the comments form. Yeah. There's so many ways to help people and, you know, the more of us that really help other people with their self-love and helping people get relief because people want relief, you know. You don't want to be yeah. struggling and suffering and being heartbroken. It feels terrible. Absolutely. And we yeah. never forget it. You, when you've had that, you never forget it. It's in you as a reminder of why self-love is so important. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. That, that's the main takeaway tonight. Self-love, self-acceptance. Yeah. But yeah, fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, this time is <laughs> fluent. It has. I can't believe it. It it's has. It's been amazing. But yeah, part two, to be continued, most to definitely. To be continued, yeah. And I'll, I'll work on my English in that time. No. no <laughs> don't change your English. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Accept it. It's about accepting it. Just say fruit one more time. Fruit. fruit. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be eating my fruit. I eat my fruit every night, so I'll be thinking of you. Thank you. That's very nice. I won't be eating fruit tonight, but no. yeah. Okay. No, no, no fruit for me. I've said it too oh, much. I wish, <laughs> look, I wish I could just wake up with a Scottish accent. I'm going to go to bed and imagine that. Yeah, manifest it. You're on it. You're on to something there. That would be a good thing to manifest. I've got to download it from the Matrix. Yeah, the analytics from YouTube, maybe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All but, right, yeah. well, we are going to say goodbye. Joe, do you yeah. want to say goodbye to everybody? Yeah, I do. Thanks again, Angus, for the opportunity. And um, I just want to wish everyone the best of luck in their, their manifesting and their journey. Um, as I've said, I'm willing to help anyone with any questions they may have. Um, right. Feel free to comment and I'll just respond whenever I can. Yeah. But thanks again. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, everybody, for watching our weird little video. <laughs> <laughs> little, not so little. Not so little. No, not so little. 
<laughs> thank you. See you in the next video. And I'll put all the links down below after Joe sends them to me. Ciao, ciao.